Good morning. Previously, I introduced the concept of letting go of your numbers dependency. Today, I'm going to show an example of what that is, how to work without numbers, and why I think it is important to let go of your numbers dependency. To do that, we are going to solve a problem which uses the same situation as a previous lesson I called, Do You Feel Your Weight? Flippin' Physics! In this example, Bo is in an elevator standing on a scale. Sweet! It's my turn to help out. Sorry, Mr. Hansen. Almost, but not yet. Ugh. Can't believe it's still not my turn. Bobby, please read the problem, and Billy, please translate. Bo is standing on a scale in an elevator. When the elevator is at rest, the reading on the scale is 722 newtons. Stop! We learned in that lesson that the reading on the scale is the same as the force normal acting on Bo. So force normal equals 722 newtons. Go ahead, Bobby. When the elevator is accelerating, the reading on the scale is 745 newtons. What is Bo's acceleration? Okay, so we actually have two force normals. There are two parts to this problem. So that first force normal is for part one, and the force normal for part two is 745 newtons. And we are solving for the acceleration in the y direction for part two, so that equals question mark. I think you forgot the acceleration in the y direction for part one. Oh, right. It says the elevator is at rest, so the acceleration in the y direction for part one is zero. Well done. Bo, please begin by drawing the free body diagram on yourself in the elevator. Sure. The force of gravity is straight down, and the force normal is straight up, and that is actually for both parts one and two, because the free body diagram does not change, only the magnitude of, of the force normal changes. Correct, Bo. Bobby, please sum the forces in the y direction during part one when the elevator is at rest. Okay. For part one, the net force in the y direction equals force normal one minus force of gravity, minus because the force of gravity is down. Net force always equals mass times acceleration. In this case, it's acceleration in the y direction for part one, which we know is zero. We can add force of gravity to both sides to show that force number one equals force of gravity. And the equation for the force of gravity equals mass times acceleration due to gravity. We know numbers for force number one and acceleration due to gravity, so let's plug in 722 for force normal one and positive 9.81 for acceleration due to gravity. That means Bose mass equals 722 over 9.81, or 73.5984 kilograms. Thanks, Bobby. Bo, please do the same thing with part two to solve for your acceleration in part two. Sure. Well, again, we have the net force in the y direction, but now it equals force normal two minus force of gravity and force of gravity equals mass times acceleration due to gravity, and net force always equals mass times acceleration. This time it is the acceleration in the y direction for part two, which does not equal zero, it is what we are solving for. So let's plug in numbers. Force normal during part two is 745 newtons. We solve for my mass in part one, it is 73.5984 which we multiply by 9.81, the acceleration due to gravity here on Earth. Calculating all that out gives us 23, and that equals my mass, which again is 73.5984 times my acceleration in the y direction for part two. My acceleration in the y direction for part two then equals 23 over 73.5984, or 0 0.312507, or 0.313 meters per second squared with three sig figs. And because my acceleration in the y direction is positive, I am accelerating upward. Thank you, Bo. Now, what you all did here is what I would call a typical numbers dependent solution. I am now going to walk through my solution to this problem where I let go of my numbers dependency. The knowns are the same as before. I sum the forces in part one in exactly the same way. However, when I get to the point where we know force normal in part one equals mass times acceleration due to gravity, instead of plugging in numbers, I'm going to pause there and put that equation in my equation holster. 
Equation holster. <laughs> yes, my equation holster for use in the future. Now, again, I sum the forces in the y direction for part two. Again, it is the same as when y'all did it using numbers, and instead of substituting in numbers, I am going to divide the equation by mass to get that Bose acceleration in the y direction during part two equals the quantity force normal two minus mass times acceleration due to gravity all divided by mass. Does anybody see anything we can substitute into this equation from our equation holster? Force normal one equals mass times acceleration due to gravity, so we can substitute force normal one in for that. We can rearrange the Holstered equation to get mass equals force normal one over acceleration due to gravity and substitute that in for mass. Absolutely. And that means we now know Bose acceleration in the y direction for part two equals acceleration due to gravity times the quantity force normal for part two minus force normal for part one, all divided by force normal for part one. Realize, we have yet to substitute any numbers into our solution. Actually, we substituted in zero for the acceleration in the y direction for part one. Is zero a number? Zero is definitely a number. Right, yeah, zero is a number. However, I do substitute in zeros when we know them because that really helps us see what is going on physics-wise. Thanks for pointing that out. At this point, because we are looking for a number answer, we do substitute in numbers. We get 9.81 times the quantity 745 minus 722, all divided by 722, which equals 0 0.312507, or 0 0.313 meters per second squared, exactly what we got before. So, two different solutions. One is a numbers-dependent solution, and the other uses mostly variables. Now, I want to talk about the advantages of the solution which lets go of numbers dependency. In the solution, which is numbers heavy, there are three times numbers are typed into the calculator. In the solution, which is variables heavy, numbers are typed into the calculator only once. Each time numbers are typed into the calculator, it increases the chances of making a mistake. Trust me, I see it all the time. Also, in the numbers solution, numbers had to be written and rewritten. Each time a number has to be written down, it increases the chances of making a mistake. Again, I often see students make little mistakes when writing down numbers. And the variable solution shows there is no reason to calculate Bose mass. None. We do not need Bose mass to solve this problem. If you need the number for Bose mass, the variable solution has an equation you can use to solve for it. Mr. P, I'm still here. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Hansen. I, I got too excited and I, I forgot you are helping. Uh, what other advantages do you see that the variable solution has over the numbers solution? It's okay. I'm glad I finally get to help out. The variable solution ends with a general equation for acceleration in the y direction in terms of variables only. This means we can use this equation to find Bose acceleration given any force normal reading on the scale. This is how labs work. We collect data and we perform repeated calculations. For example, in the Do You Feel Your Weight lesson, we collected data for the force normal as a function of time for Bo in the elevator. We can then use that data to calculate the acceleration of Bo as a function of time. We just take the equation we have for acceleration in the y direction in part two and plug that equation into our spreadsheet program. Now we have the acceleration data for every data point. And it was easy to calculate because we have an equation for acceleration in terms of variables. In addition to that, just like we graphed the force normal for Bo as a function of time in the previous lesson, we can now graph Bo's acceleration as a function of time too, or other details of the motion we may want to know. And there's more. There's more? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, Mr. P. There's more. From the variables equation for Bose acceleration in the y direction, we can deduce a lot of information. And this method is both a way to check our work for accuracy and to learn the big picture of the physical principles at play. If 
the measured value of the force normal two were increased, then Bose acceleration is also increased. This matches our experience and our expectations. If the acceleration due to gravity of the planet were to increase, and the ratio of normal forces were kept the same, then Bose acceleration would also increase. You can see that in the equation. And my favorite example, if we set force normal two equal to zero, If we substitute zero for force normal two, then you can show that acceleration in the y direction is equal to negative g. Wait, wait. That is really familiar. Yeah. It's the acceleration of an object in the y direction when the object is in yeah. free fall. That's it. Right. If there is no force normal acting on me when I am in, a, in the elevator, the elevator is accelerating downward so fast that I am in free fall. <laughs> cool. Yeah, exactly. I love this stuff. I know. I do, too. Thanks for your help, Mr. Hansen. You're welcome. Anytime. There is one more point I have to make about what we can do when we let go of our numbers dependency. Let's do another example involving the same situation. Again, Bobby, please read, and Billy, please translate. Bo is in an elevator and feels like he weighs half his weight. What is his acceleration? Ah, uh, is that it? That's it. But there are no numbers. I, I think that's the point. Right. That bit about half my weight seems useful. Yeah. Remember from the elevator lesson from before that you don't feel your weight, you feel the force normal acting on you? Okay, so then we can translate the fact that you feel like you weigh half your weight to mean that force normal 2 equals half of your force of gravity. Then the solution for this problem is the same as the variables solution Mr. P just did all the way through finding the equation for acceleration in the y direction for part 2 in terms of variables. The difference here is that because force of gravity and force normal 1 are equal, and from the problem statement force normal 2 equals half of force of gravity, then we know force normal 2 also equals half of force normal 1. And we can substitute half of force normal 1 in for force normal 2 in our variable equation for acceleration in the y direction for part 2. Force normal 1 cancels out, and we get negative one-half times the acceleration due to gravity for Bose acceleration in the y direction for part two. Cool. When I feel like I weigh half what I normally do, that means I'm accelerating downward at half the rate of free fall. That is cool. Well done, everybody. Realize that as you get further into your physics learning, problems are going to have fewer and fewer numbers in them. In summary, letting go of your numbers dependency reduces mistakes, allows you to better understand relationships between variables, allows for easier repeated calculations like we do in labs, and the future of your physics learning includes fewer numbers. A numbers-dependent solution is like a dead-end one-way street. In order to solve the problem, again, with different numbers, you need to get out of your car, go back to the beginning of the street, get in a new car, and drive down the street again. However, a solution that is primarily variables is like a turnabout with many, many exits or options, and each exit is a path to extend your physics learning. But you do need practice learning how to drive around a turnabout. I do. Yeah. Yeah. The yield sign always confuses me. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoy learning with you.